it's my view that things as big as internet uh, don't happen because one person or two people did something. It's because a whole bunch of people decided that they wanted it to happen. This thing is still evolving. Even though the design was done 40 years ago, it has evolved over that period of time and it continues to change. That's the one thing that makes this network so unusual. It wasn't designed to do anything in particular. And that's why it's been able to do almost anything we can think of to program. All right, Dmox, how we doing? How we doing, Dmox? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Look at this! Wow! It's so exciting to be back. Three long years, but we are back in person, and the energy in this room is incredible. I, I'm panicking right now. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, it's electric. Yes, it has been so long that we've been stuck in our homes, behind a screen, not able to connect with each other. But there has been one special thing that's kept us together during that time and that is none other than RFCs for technical specifications of internet standards. <laughs> RFCs have such a special place in all of our hearts, and it's why it's our honor to be back on stage with you all today here at DMUX, bringing you one of the biggest announcements in RFC history. As we all know, with the recent publication of RFC 9308, applicability of the quick transport protocol, Phase four of the IETF standardization universe has come to a close. I cannot believe we're already at the end of phase four. It's been such an epic journey. I mean, there's been so many awesome moments. RFC 9209, the proxy status HTTP response header. Classic. I mean, I can't forget RFC 9107, BGP optimal oh, route reflection. That was one of my favorites. Truly. <laughs> it's been such a crazy journey, but this chapter is coming to a close. That's right. And you know, if phase four is coming to a close, what the heck is coming next? Well, we'd love to tell you. That's right. That's right. That's right. We are here to officially announce phase five of the IETF SU right here at DMUX. It's kicking off with our false lead of RFCs. We are going to be bringing you a special sneak peek here today. You know, it's always such a special thing to be able to be in the room with you guys as we oh. kick off a new phase. I mean, I can't forget three years ago oh. when we kicked off phase four and how the fans reacted. Something special. I think we, we should take a look at that. You think yeah. we should take a look at that? And finally, I am happy to confirm RFC 886. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was special. Feels like just yesterday. I can't believe how young I look. Oh, come Feels on. Like... You look exactly the same. Oh, Give gosh. me a break. Wow. But it is time to turn the page on the epic phase four and say hello to an even more epic phase five. Today, we have not one, not two, but three epic phase five RFCs that we'll be officially announcing here today. It's gonna be such a blast, it's such a treat. That's right. I can't wait. You guys oh ready? Gosh. You guys ready Are to see ready? this? Are we ready? Are we ready? Oh my God, yes. Okay. All right. First reveal, here we go. Yes. It's official. RFC 9487 Stream Control Transmission Protocol, the interrupt data chunk, is here. It's coming out of draft review. It's going to be in your standards track later this year. That's right. Holiday season, SCTP flans, take a victory lap because you're eating good this holiday season. Yep. This is going to be picking up right where things left off in RFC 9260 with the specification of the IBIT data chunk for SCTP. We're going to be bringing the interrupt data chunk into the official IETF SCTP SU canon. That's right. And not only does it do that, 
but it actually expands upon the existing lore of the recommended TCB parameters. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the fans are going to go crazy for that They've been clamoring for some TCB board for a long time, oh, yeah. so this is going to be great. Oh, yeah. I think I you're going to have to update some message board uh, threads on there. I mean, I already have my Reddit burner account ready to go on ready this Ready to one. go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interrupt is such a feisty, fiery data chunk, we can't wait for you all to see what kind of epic adventures SCTP clients can get into when they implement this new data parameter. It's going to be such a blast. That's right. And gang, this is just the first this RFC. This is the first one. Are we ready for <laughs> RFC number two? <laughs> yes. Again, more okay, epic let's from go. Here. That's right. FTP is back. FTP is back, people. Yes. That's right. They know. Oh my gosh. We're bringing it back. It's been over 20 years since we have seen this beloved classic, and we are bringing it into 2022, fresh coat of paint. But here's the thing, all right? This isn't your papa's FTP. Mm -hmm. This is a brand new FTP set in a separate timeline from the SFTP timeline that we established in the 90s. It's kind of like a reset, kind of a reboot. It's still the same scrappy file transfer protocol you know yep. and love, but we're taking it back to its gritty, dark, insecure roots. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. And you know, even though this is a new FTP, you might see some familiar faces. Maybe a certain desktop application you might remember. I think we all know. I think we all know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Be on the look. I think old and new fans are going to find something to love about this RFC when it comes out March 2023. All right. It's going to be so exciting. I can't wait. Two RFCs down. We got one more. We got one to go. Are you ready for RFC 3? That's right. This is the big one. Just real quick here, can we get some deep breathing going? Can you take your you seat might belt and strap in? Because this is about to be intense. It's about to take off. Huh? There we go. The very first <laughs> IETF official crossover RFC, RFC 9899 IMAP versus POP email wars. We've been building to huge things in both the IMAP and POP RFC universes, and this is going to unify those narratives into one historic technical specification. Gang, this is crazy. Two protocols in one RFC. It's never been done before. Some of you tried. We at the IETF. I'd never even dreamed of this until phase five, but, but we're fans, crazy and we'll do it. Fans demanded it. Fans demanded it. Unicode and we Consortium heard that. could never. Unicode would never do this. <laughs> W3C would never do this. We have such a special treat for you here today. That's right. We have an exclusive Demux first, exclusive first look at um, the behind the scenes kind of process that went into the making of this historic RFC. Kind of a little, you know, a little documentary, a little something to show. Yeah, let's take a look at what, do we take a look? what they're cooking up in the kitchen. When I got word from the IETF that they had greenlit the IMAP versus POP crossover RFC, my eyes nearly shot out the back of my head. Email unites us all, and, and yet its protocols are so divided, right? Like, there's so much to play with there, and we knew we were going to have a lot of fun with it. My name is Samir Moon. I am the director for RFC 9899, IMAP VPOP. Hey, my name is Mark Dwyer. I'm one of the technical directors for RFC 9899, IMAP versus POP. It's been a dream to work on these two uh, storied protocols since I was a little kid. I've always loved IMAP, POP, email, open source standards, and to see them come together into one epic crossover RFC, uh, it's a dream come true. It's not every day that you are tasked with something that is literally setting the standard for a future generation. Oh, I remember collaborating with the team in some of those early brainstorming sessions. It was pretty clear very early on that we were on to something special. POP is really, if you have a message on one device, whereas IMAP is more of a client-server kind of thing, and you could have multiple clients connect to your IMAP server in the back, in the back and there was really never a reason for you to use POP when you could just use IMAP. Do you think this is a joke? I, no, I know this is not a joke. This, I know that expectations are really high. Expectations are high. This is the RFC of the season. Having someone like Samir at the head of the ship, really steering the course uh, was such a such a blessing because he was really able to wrap his head around this world that we had been crafting and building. Do I look 
like an idiot to you? You've had a lot of, uh, you think I'm an idiot, right? He doesn't think I'm an idiot. <laughs> you think I'm just, I have bad memory or something? I don't understand what the problem is. I think you have great memories, sir. You have one of the best memories I've ever seen. So what's the problem? Yeah, Samir can definitely be the kind of guy where you don't want to break bad news to him to, you know, kind of ease him into it a little bit. Um, which is, I mean, I understand because he has such a strong vision, he's such a visionary leader. It can be hard to um, get him to... I don't think it's that hard. I think we can do it. And I think what I should do instead is fire the whole team. Fire the whole team, get some, you know, kids from Facebook in here. I think they do pretty well. You don't have to do that, okay? Open source software is something that should be handled with a lot of respect and bring in much- Email is what binds us as a species. I remember as a child communicating with my mother through email, not something very easy to do otherwise. When we first started going for a while, it was like, there is no way in hell we're gonna pull this off. And then after a while, it kind of hit me like, okay, we're really gonna bring IMAP and pop together under one RFC. I think it's something that you have to see to believe and experience to believe. And when this RFC drops, the world is going to be a different place. I want audiences to know that these standards are in good hands. And if there is even a single complaint, there will be hell to pay. Oh, wow. incredible, incredible stuff. Incredible. You just know with a team like that, that passion is going to be infused into every page of this RFC. Absolutely. It's, oh, Absolutely. It's beautiful. Wow. We have shown you guys three fantastic RFCs that kick off phase five. But here's the thing. That's just the beginning. We have so many more that we just want to give you a real sneak peek at. We got so many goodies coming down the pipeline. We got... WebRTC Cataclysm coming next summer. DNS Zero Trust. OAuth and the JSON Web Token of Chaos will be taking us into 2024. For all you sweethearts out there, we got the last IPv6 address that's going to be a Valentine's Day special. HLS Armageddon is going to be a thrill. And to close out our epic two years of RFCs, we have none other than SSL Rise of the Botnet for this holiday season. Whew. So much exciting stuff in the pipeline. But now, here's the thing. We said we were only going to show you three RFCs. We might have lied. We might have told a little fib there. We might have, you know, <laughs> said something we shouldn't have because we actually have one, one last, last thing. thing. the dawn of a new day for RFCs. We've reached the five digit mark. RFC 10,000 is on the roadmap and it is going to be an order of magnitude more epic than anything that's come before. Wow, I truly cannot wait for this. It's gonna be epic, it's gonna be groundbreaking, it's gonna be game changing, everything in between. Monumental. And I know what everyone in this room is thinking. You're all thinking, what the heck are they gonna do better be epic. when we hit five digits? What's happening in RFC 10K? Well, we can't tell you too much right now. We gotta keep it under wraps, but there is one special detail we're happy to confirm with everyone in this room today. Robert Downey Jr. has been cast in RFC 10,000 <laughs> as the TLS handshake. Yes, I know, it's an exciting day. Yes. Yes, thank you. Gang, today has been such a fun ride. We have seen so many new RFCs as part of Phase 5, and oh, we're just getting started. Historic. I know that everyone in this room is going to be able to look back on this day. You know, 50, 60, 70 years, you're going to gather their children, your children, their children, and their children. The whole fam. Get them around the campfire and say, I was there October 13, 2022, when they announced FTP Reborn. It's and a historic. They, they're going to look up to you with tears in their eyes and say, thank you. You witnessed history. Yes. Gang, let's get after it. As you can see, we at the IETF have our work cut out for us. And oh, yeah. soon, you all will also have the work cut out for you updating your kernels and dev dependencies with some of this new interoperable be behavior. Uh, we can't promise it's all gonna be backwards compatible or anything. We know that we've really striven for that in the past, but uh, it's important that you know, we kind of get stuff out the door and we're just gonna have to make time for sort of upgrades and it's an, it's an important part of the job, uh, even if it's not the most uh, sexy thing in the world. You know, right. It's good to keep stay up to date. It's important. Right, and that's why we're here. That's right. Dmux, thank you so much. You know, we might set the standards up here, but it's all of you that make them come to life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We've the ITF.